Hey, let's talk about romance. Hi, I'm Colleen. If you've never been here before, I talk about reading and writing. And if that sounds like stuff you're interested in, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and hang out. Instead of making like a traditional TBR for the months this summer, I'm just gonna do a big summer TBR of what I'd like to read for the rest of the summer. And this video is about all the romance I wanna read. It's my favorite genre, so I have quite a few books that I'd really like to get to before we hit autumn. I've talked before about how summer is my favorite time of year to read, so I'm really hoping to pack a lot of books in these next couple months. So we're gonna start with the book I'm currently reading, and it is The King's Man by Elizabeth Kingston. I started it yesterday, so I'm not super far into it. Um, this was recommended to me by B and her books on Twitter, and she's a librarian with fantastic romance recommendations. So if you're on Twitter and you want someone who can really recommend romance, she's a great follow. I'll link her handle in the description. But this is a medieval romance. I had put like a SOS out that I wanted to go on like a historical romance deep dive, but I wanted to like get out of the Regency and she recommended this and then a bunch of other people said I needed to read this series. I'm not very far into it, but it's a medieval setting. And right now we've got a mercenary named Ranulf, I think is how you say his name. And he is injured and there's this woman taking care of him who he thinks is an angel. And I believe she's like a Welsh She's not a princess, but she's definitely noble. And I think they're gonna fall in love. I think that's gonna happen. But I'm liking it so far. I really like the medieval time period in England in particular. Um, I really like the show Last Kingdom. I really like the Viking show. So that's like a fun period for me to get into. So far, so good. I assume I'll finish it either tomorrow or the next day. Next up, I have The Scandal of It All by Sophie Jordan. It's book two in the Rogue Files. I read the first book in the Rogue Files in May. That was while the Duke was sleeping. And this book is set up in that book. The hero from book one has a very young stepmother and her name is like Grace Ciela. She goes by Ella and she is widowed. At the end of book one, we see that there's this younger man who's kind of friends with the family who's very interested in her, but that would be very taboo at the time. He's never been married. She's a widow. She's older than him. Yikes. But so this book is about them. And just from reading the description, it sounds really fun because there's some like teasy stuff in here that think I'm gonna like it, that Ella's looking for just one single wild night. And that Lord Strickland, who's the friend of the family, finds her. And this is the sentence. Lord Strickland never permitted himself to fantasize about this sultry off-limits lady, but then he never expected to find Ella in a place so wicked, looking for what he's only too happy to give. So that makes me think there's gonna be some sort of like party, which I like those situations a lot in Regency. So I think this will be a very fun read. And Sophie Jordan is always a good author to pick up. Next up, I've got The Goddess of the Hunt by Tessa Dare. I'm sorry I bought this used, so it's got a horrible sticker right there. And I really love Tessa Dare. This is one of her older ones that I was not familiar with, so I was happy when I saw it at Half Price Books, so I could give it a try. This has some tropes in it that I really enjoy. Um, the heroine's name is Lucy, and she is husband hunting, but decides she needs a little practice before she seduces her would-be husband. And in walks Jeremy, her brother's best friend. And so you've got the brother's best friend trope, but you also have the sort of like, this is all practice <laughs> with kissing and stuff like that, which I think those are really fun in historicals because it really plays with like how culture was then, like whatever, in this like fantasy version of Regency where you couldn't really like practice date, like you were just nothing to engage. Um, so I think that'll be really fun. I love Tessa Dare. I think her writing is wonderful. She's like really funny for, um, in these historical settings and she writes very good spicy scenes and great love stories. So I can't wait to read this. Next up, I have Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. And this is the first book in the Brown Sisters trilogy. And I've been wanting to read this series for so long, I finally bought it. Um, this has a fun thing with like the uh, heroine, Chloe is chronically ill and she makes, she has like a near death experience and then she makes a list of things she wants to do. And it's on the back, so I'm gonna read it to you. She wants to enjoy a drunken night out, ride a motorcycle, go camping, have meaningless but thoroughly enjoyable sex, travel the world with nothing but hand luggage, and do something bad. So she's going to meet this guy named Red who has a motorcycle and is apparently very hot. And I assume the two of them are going to check some things off that list and at the same time probably fall in love. Um, I was having this discussion on Twitter yesterday. I really like contemporary romance, but I don't like rom-com romance very much. And I've found like illustrated covers sometimes put me off because I think it's gonna be a rom-com and I don't really wanna read a rom-com. I'd rather read like slightly angsty uh, contemporary romance, but I'm gonna give this one a try because the series has been like 
in all my romance book clubs, people just love it. So I'm looking forward to it and hope I will love it. Okay, then I have some books that I either haven't bought yet or I have on my Kindle. And the first one is volume two of Laura Olympus, which is a graphic novel. And it I consider it a romance because it is a story of a love story. It won't have like a conclusion because I know there's a lot of volumes. Um, I read volume one in the fall, I think, and I loved it. I had read the webtoon, but I don't like reading webtoons on my computer. So when it was announced it as me published, I was super excited. It comes out in July. I'll definitely buy it and probably read it like I'll sit down and read the entire thing because that's what I did with the first one. The second one I have, it's not out yet, but I've already pre-ordered for my Kindle, is Lay Me Down in Ivy by Stephanie Simpson. Um, this looks fantastic. Uh, Stephanie Simpson is someone I follow on Twitter. She's a great indie author and does a lot of like um, work with main characters who are either disabled or have you know different parts of their lives that are difficult but how they get over them with the help of maybe a partner or even on their own before they settle down with a partner this one is like a historical power play sort of novel and she put up a line on twitter yesterday and it was an insta buy for me and i think the cover is absolutely beautiful so i'm really excited to dive into this as soon as it comes out i can't remember the exact release date for this but i think i'm only like five days away from it right now i'll pop down the release date right here for you next i have one arc from nat galley that's a romance i haven't been requesting a lot of romances from nat galley lately but i saw this one and i wanted to read it it's called beautiful distraction by lydia michaels it's a contemporary romance and it's about a curvy woman who's had been kind of like down on her luck and feeling like people have been saying negative things about her appearance and she meets this lumberjack and he's super into her. It's got the small town vibe. It's got a friends to lovers vibe. I'm really excited to read it. I feel like the small town friends to lovers is like something I really like and I also love small towns romance that are really spicy because a lot of them tend to be sweet and by the cover I'm assuming this is going to be pretty spicy but I'll let you know. Next, I have two romances I want to reread this summer, and they are Seduce Me at Sunrise by Lisa Claypass, which is maybe my favorite romance of all time, but I haven't read it in a really long time, so I bought a copy of it because I read this when I was in grad school and I was not buying books. I was only getting them from the library. And so I bought a copy and um, I really want to reread it and still see if I still love it so much. Um, this book is kind of like Wuthering Heights-ish. You've got Kev, who is um, adopted by a family as a child and he's like an orphan and he sort of falls in love with Winnie who's one of the daughters and they both fall in love with each other but then he leaves for a long time and comes back when he comes back he's engaged she's engaged to someone else or she's like about to be engaged to someone else and it's kind of like Wuthering Heights has a happy ending which I that's something I would I enjoy very much so I'm hoping I love it just as much I think I will because Lisa Claybess is such a fantastic writer and I can't wait. And this one's got a good step back because it's like an old school step back. Love it. And the next book I want to reread is technically a fantasy, but it's a very romantic fantasy. So that's why I put it on this video. And it's Wolfskin by Juliette Marillier. Um, I loved this book when I read it in 2004, I think, question mark is when I read it. And I had lent my copy like 10 years ago to one of my friends and then she moved. And so I never got it back. But I found a nice hardcover in really good condition because I didn't want to get a mass a mass market paperback version of it at half price book so I bought it so I could reread it um, this is a story of a young man living in Norway ish probably I can look on the map yes he lives in what's present day Norway because there's a nice map here and how he becomes a wolf skin which is like a kind of warrior and then he goes to create a settlement in an island that I think is like the Orkney Islands and when he's there, he meets this woman, Nessa, who is like kind of like a princess, but she's also a seer, like she can see the future. And also he has this relationship with his friend, Summerland, who has very different morals from him. And then the story goes from there. And um, I'm really excited to reread this because I can't remember a ton of the details of this book, but I remember how much I loved it, like so much. I remember making my roommate read it immediately. So I'm very excited to read it again. Juliet Marillier is also one of my favorite authors and she doesn't have anything on the books to come out soon. So I figured it's a good time for a reread. Okay, and then my next like <laughs> TBR for romance is kind of general and I don't really have the titles ready, but I'm planning to read several werewolf themed romances this summer and some of them part of series and that's because of something I'm working on right now and that's all I'll say about that 
but you'll see them in my wrap ups after I actually am able to read some and then I can give you the author's titles and my reviews. Okay, so here are the two romances I've already read this summer. The first one is The Bride Goes Rogue by Joanna Shoup. Here's the cover. This book was phenomenal and Joanna Shoup is phenomenal. This one, we've got our heroine Catherine and she has been like sort of engaged to this man, Preston, who she's met I think one time, but her father set it up. Preston's father has passed away, but their two fathers used to be business partners. And so Catherine finally, after like a year of thinking that they're engaged, just shows up at his office and is like, we need to plan our wedding. And he's like, I am not engaged to you. I never asked you to marry me. I have no intention of following through with this betrothal our parents set up. And she's mortified. So she goes to her best friend, who's very fun and a little naughty, and is like, I want to forget about this man. So they go to this masquerade ball where you have to dress up as, I think the theme is like the French Revolution or something, and she dresses up, and there's this man there who's dressed up, and their costumes match, and it's like one of the King Louis and one of his mistresses, and they have a wonderful night together. But eventually they find out that they were each other and Preston starts accusing her of trying to trap him and she's like, I do not want to marry you. This is such a good story. Joanna Shoup weaves together a wonderful love story. She puts so much heart into her romances that it's hard not to fly through them. This is set in the Gilded Age, which is like the late 1800s, and this one's set in New York City, and so you kind of get the backdrop also of New York City being built. Joanna Shoup also has really interesting heroines, so Catherine's big thing is she's really into art, and she wants to open an art museum, which was awesome to read about and think about like how all these museums got started. Definite five-star read. This whole series is fantastic. You should pick it up. And the second romance that I've already read this summer is Always Practice Safe Hex by Juliet Cross. This is technically the fourth book in the Stay a Spell series. There's a Christmas one also, so it's the fifth to come out. And this one is about Livy and Gareth. And um, if you're familiar with the series, Livy is a witch and she is one of the Savoy sisters and they live in New Orleans and they're each meeting their soulmates. And Gareth is a Grim. And this is our first uh, kind of peek into what it means to be a Grim because they're very secretive supernaturals. Uh, I loved this book, which is kind of funny because it has two tropes in it that I don't really like, which are like rivals to lovers and workplace romance. But Julia Cross is such an amazing writer that I didn't even care that these aren't tropes that I usually read. This book was fantastic. So Livy and Gareth are part of this competition to do like a social media campaign for something important to the supernatural community and they're put on the same team and then their team advances. We watch them sort of fall in love slowly, but first they fall very deeply in lust. These books are very steamy, so if you're looking for a very steamy supernatural read, definitely read this one. This does have a trigger warning for like past description of child abuse and like attempted assault, I would call the scene. So if either of those things are hard for you, know that they're handled pretty well, I think. Like I don't, it didn't make me feel uncomfortable at all reading them, but they are in there. You definitely should read the whole series though and start with Wolf Gone Wild, which is number one and it's up on my shelf over there because this entire series is absolutely fantastic. So that is my summer of romance. I have a lot of great titles I can't wait to get to and I've already read two fantastic ones which is wonderful. I'll definitely do a romance wrap up at the end of August so you can see what I thought of all of these or as many as I get to. I'm sure some of these I'll end up reading in September or October. If you've made it this far in the video, do me a favor and drop me a big red heart in the comments if you love romance as much as I do. And I hope you are in the middle of a great romance book right now or about to start one. Pick up one of these and let me know what you think. See you later.